I did find just now a sizable amount of bear droppings. And so they are out and about here. It was fresh probably from yesterday. It wasn't like uh, steaming hot, but it was um, fairly fresh. And so I did forget my bear spray today. I wasn't going hiking. It's in my hiking backpack, which I didn't bring. And so I'm hoping I don't see any of them because I'm empty handed and defenseless. But I'm making noise talking to you guys. I don't think any bears are gonna bother me. Hi, this is Quinlan, and today I am in the mountains of Hanamaki in Iwate Prefecture, and I'm foraging for Koshi Abura. This is Koshi Abura. The name in English does not exist. There is no name in English. There's only a very long Latin name, which you can see here, and I'm not even gonna try and pronounce that. And it is called by some the queen of wild vegetables here in Japan, and it is Definitely one of my favorites. This is perfect. I'll, I'll take this one too. So you can see here, this one is uh, still too small. This one is too small. Too small, way too small. In maybe another week, there's gonna be so much of this stuff everywhere, it'll just be feasting for days on this great stuff. Almost, just need, God, another couple days and this will open up nicely. I'm gonna leave these guys alone. Hmm. Small, but it'll do. Yeah, some of this, some of this stuff here is okay. Yeah, I'll take this. There we go. This one's uh, pretty nice. I like them a little bit more opened up than this, but this will do. This will also do. Yeah, just a little bit too small on these guys, huh? Gonna have to wait. This one is starting to be opened out nicely here. You want them to have the leaves spread out just a little bit. Perfect. This guy, man, it's still tight in there, but big and fat, really good. These, these ones right here are pretty close to perfect. Just about exactly how you want them. Just right. Mmm, they, they smell so good too. Too small. Yeah, a bit too small. Mmm, too thin. Yeah, it's a bit early this year. Most of these are too small, huh? And look at this treasure trove. Big, fat, thick, spreading out. These are perfect, huge, huge, and delicious. Look at this. Oh, I lucked out here. Perfect. And so many of them. This is my dinner right here. Oh, perfect. Here's an example of borderline gone too far. I'm gonna leave this one because this one actually is too big in my opinion, but this is what they start looking like later on in the season. This place where I found all these really nice big ones is right next to this. This right here is what the tree looks like when it grows up larger. This is a Koshiabara tree right here. And of course we can't reach them, but way up in the branches, there's tons, tons more of those as well. I've just stumbled on uh, a sizable amount of bear feces, and so I am smack dab in the middle of their territory. It's not steaming fresh, but fresh enough that it's still alive um, with bugs. Um, and uh, so yeah, I spaced out bringing my bear spray today. 
not ideal, but um, I'm being loud talking to you guys and uh, maybe singing to myself off camera a little bit to keep the bears at bay. It'll be fine. You see, you see how this tree is all torn up here? Almost bleeding with its sap. This is from a bear climbing right up there. Probably taking a nap up in those branches. Hope he's not there right now. A little bit, a little bit too dense for me to see if he's still up there taking a nap. The traditional way to eat koshiabara is as tempura, but I am terrible at cooking tempura, and so I usually don't attempt that. I gave up on tempura. I tried last year, and it just I'm just not good at it. And so I usually uh, find someone to cook tempura for me and uh, bribe them with lots of fresh vegetables to do it. The thing about foraging for koshiabara is that it's usually not in those gorgeous uh, little stream valleys deep in the mountains. It's more just in places like this, just in a normal um, mixed uh, deciduous and coniferous um, forest. And so I don't come to do this for the scenery. This is really just for the treasure hunt fun of finding what I consider to be really delicious. A little later this year, I'll take you up some of those um, mountain streams looking for things like uh, leaf wasabi and uh, shidoke, other things that are delicious and are found in some of the most picturesque wild locations. I'm gonna stop talking and get back to picking and uh, hope I don't meet any bears. I'll talk to you when I got out of the forest. This right here, just how you like them. Like this, spread out a little bit, perfect. I think I'll take uh, this one too and leave the rest. This stuff is a weed, it grows like a weed. It's a powerful tree so you're not hurting it irreparably by harvesting. Right here, this one here is exactly what you want. It's just a little bit small, but perfect. This is just what they imagine when they think of koshiabara tempura, just maybe a little fatter than this. I have a little confession to make. I screwed up. I was scrambling around so much in the brush looking for those delicious edibles that I must have slipped at some point or I don't know how it happened, but I lost my car key. It was in my pocket, rookie mistake. Usually I put it in my backpack. I forgot. So I, um, yeah, I called in a favor, called up a friend who knows how to get into my house to find my spare key and come, but it's gonna take like an hour and a half to do it. So in the meantime, uh, while I'm waiting for them to arrive, I scrambled up a stream nearby and I'm just uh, here um, enjoying the scenery, looking at flowers, and I found some shidoke. I left my bag uh, next to the car, so I didn't expect to be foraging more here. I thought I was just gonna be, uh, you know, taking in the sights, but I found some of one of my other favorites, shidoke, so I'm just sort of stuffing it <laughs> in my pocket. Don't, don't be like me in this case. Be careful, put your keys somewhere and that they can't fall out of your pockets. Oh well. It is a beautiful day to just be walking up a stream though. I'm still wondering if I'm gonna bump into any uh, bears. Not yet though. This right here is a perfect big patch of shidoke. You can see right here, it's almost too big, but it's nice and thick at the root. And I didn't bring a knife with me because I didn't plan on being here, but this is almost too big, but it's still okay. Just sort of break it off there and take, I'll just take a couple of these. Oh, it's perfect. Better with a knife, but you can break it off. Oh, this is so thick. This is top class shidoke. Just amazing. You can't really forage for wild vegetables in Japan as a tourist without a guide or a local friend or someone taking you out here. Um, this is generally someone's land. It might be national forest land or near a river where it's sort of public, or it could be a mountain owned by someone. 
where I am right now, I do actually know the owner and have their permission to be taking uh, all this wonderful shidoke from here. In fact, I'm gonna give uh, at least half to them <laughs> as a thank you. But uh, what I do wanna say is even if you can't forage while you're visiting Japan, what you can do is go to restaurants in the spring and sometimes even through the summertime and order what's called in Japanese sansai. Sansai are these wild forageables, these mountain vegetables as they're called, and they are so good. Most places will serve them as tempura, sometimes in soba noodles. Um, a lot of good restaurants, not so much chains, will offer... Yeah, bugs, damn, swallowed a bug there almost. Yeah. One thing I forgot about the spring, one thing I love about the winter and forgot about the spring is all the goddamn bugs. Ah. Anyway, you can go to any number of good restaurants and try this there. And that's what I really recommend. And if you happen to live here or be visiting someone who knows, then you can get the uh, gear you need, go with someone who knows the area, you don't wanna get lost out here, and go foraging. Where I am right now, there is no cell phone reception, and so it would be bad to get lost, really. This is my small haul from today. This is more than enough for me, so I'm gonna share some of these with uh, some friends and then cook these up tonight. Looks like today there's not enough time to show you how to cook these, sadly, but let me just describe it to you because it's really simple. Basically, if you don't wanna do tempura, though eat some as tempura, but then in addition to that, pull off the, the bottom part, cut off the edge a little bit, take a clump of, say, three of them at once and buy, as you can in Japan, very thinly sliced pork and wrap it around them and then just fry with salt and pepper in a frying pan or grill and it's so good. It's amazing. I had this idea to do it and um, I've been spreading it around among my uh, Japanese wild vegetable enthusiasts and they all love it. Um, I'm sorry to vegetarians. If you're vegetarian then yeah, best to eat it just as a uh, tempura, but tempura gets pretty oily, and so in addition to tempura, you could also um, just stir fry it with vegetables, and I think that would be fantastic as well. It's got such a, just a great smell and aroma. The only thing is it goes bad really quickly, so I'm gonna try and eat everything I picked tonight, and what I can't eat, I'm, I'm gonna parcel out to a few friends, so it all gets eaten tonight, because it, there's a way to freeze it, I'm not good at that, so I'm gonna try and eat it all when it's fresh. At any rate, thank you so much for watching. I will show you many more vegetables this spring as I intend to go foraging as much as possible. So I hope that you will come again and watch more of that. But until then, I'll see you on the trails.